Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're looking at the untold story of Queen Elizabeth II. She was a pretty young English rose, and to watch this new age come into being with the coronation of the Queen was a moment to celebrate. For this video, we're looking at the incredible moments, achievements, and milestones of the longest reigning monarch in the history of the UK. What did you think of the Queen's reign? Let us know in the comments below. Born April 21, 1926, Elizabeth Alexandra Mary Windsor was not originally destined for a life on the throne, but in 1936, her uncle, King Edward VIII, abdicated, shifting the line of succession to his brother, King George VI, and subsequently, eldest niece. Archbishop, we're missing Papa. <laughs> Very good. The princess was just 13 years old when World War II broke out. These are not Hollywood sound effects. This is the music they play every night in London, the symphony of war. Like many other children, she and her sister, Princess Margaret, were evacuated from the city. They were initially relocated to Balmoral Castle in Scotland, and then moved back to England, spending the majority of the subsequent five years at Windsor Castle, where she continued to carry out her public service. But the royal family somehow separated themselves out from their social class from the aristocracy to become leaders of the people of the people's nation at war. In 1940, the teenaged princess shared a message of encouragement to other youngsters through the BBC radio program Children's Hour. And we are trying to, to bear our own share of the danger and sadness of war. We know, every one of us, that in the end all will be well. As the war continued, so did her dedication to her country. She wanted to enlist, but her family supposedly needed some convincing, since this had never been done by a female royal. But aged 19, she joined the Women's Auxiliary Territory Service, where she trained as a mechanic and driver. The princess, who was on the eve of her 19th birthday when these pictures were taken, is at the wheel of a 1,500-weight truck in convoy. Although she drives it with apparent composure, she had no experience of driving before she commenced her training. It didn't take her long to rise through the ranks, quickly becoming an honorary junior commander. The press loved the hands-on royal, naming her Princess Auto Mechanic. Her image as an ambulance driver played a potent part in wartime propaganda and was considered a huge success. Her persistence had paid off. When the war ended in 1945, she and Princess Margaret were allowed to leave the palace and join the celebrations, incognito, of course. Did the conga through the Ritz and the look of disapproval on the sort of matronly women having their dinners, you know, was just brilliant. The next major moment in the princess's life was her wedding to Prince Philip. Sheer perfection. Fact. Your Highness. You have to hand it to her. It's quite a victory. But to give their love story true justice, we need to hop back in time for just a moment. They first met at a wedding when he was 13 and she was just eight years old. They were reintroduced five years later, and as the story goes, she knew then that she had met the one. Princess Elizabeth saw this 18-year-old, six foot tall, incredibly handsome. He was nicknamed the Viking, and she fell desperately desperately head over heels in love with him at first sight. But it would still be another eight years until they'd start courting. Their engagement was announced on July 9th, 1947, with the big day taking place on November 20th that same year. The ceremony, which took place at Westminster Abbey, was broadcast by the BBC to 200 million people worldwide. Again and again, the people called for Elizabeth and Philip. Again and again, they joyfully responded. In 1948, she became a first-time mother following the birth of Prince Charles. Then, in 1950, the couple welcomed Princess Anne to the family. Their family of six would be complete by 1964, but there were still some other milestones ahead for the princess before that. In 1952, the young royal couple embarked on a tour while the king was suffering from ill health. It was during their time in Kenya that news of his passing reached them. The king, who retired to rest last night in his usual health, passed peacefully away in his sleep. The BBC offers profound sympathy to Her Majesty the Queen and the royal family. 
The trip was cut short and she returned to the UK to resume responsibilities as Britain's new monarch. Due to the mourning period, her coronation was delayed until the following year. When a new monarch takes the throne, they can either stick with their birth name or choose a regnal name. When the 27-year-old princess was asked what she would prefer, she supposedly replied, my own, of course. God, save the queen. It was the first coronation to be broadcast on television, attracting approximately 27 million people across the United Kingdom. Meanwhile, radio listeners totaled to about 11 million more, an estimated 277 million worldwide. After the ceremony, she, her husband, and royal officials embarked on a five-mile procession around the capital, where well-wishers gathered to catch a glimpse of their new queen. I mean, it was a real kind of feeling of euphoria. We were all rejoicing. Speaking of broadcasting firsts, in 1957, on the 25th anniversary of the first ever Christmas broadcast, the queen addressed the country via television rather than radio. I very much hope that this new medium will make my Christmas message more personal and direct. This is a tradition that has continued into the 21st century. In 2021, for instance, it was watched by more than 9 million people, attracting more viewers than any other program in the UK. While COVID again means we can't celebrate quite as we may have wished, we can still enjoy the many happy traditions. As you can imagine, the Queen was involved in her fair share of landmark moments over her 70-year reign. For instance, in 1961, she became the first royal to tour India in half a century. For the Queen, this is the beginning of five strenuous weeks in which she's never to be far from the crowds pressing forward for a glimpse of her. She continued her streak by becoming the first reigning monarch to visit South America in 1968, the Persian Gulf countries in 1979, and mainland China in 1986. But travel wasn't just about essential meetings with important officials. It was about showing people that she was their queen, or as she put it, quote, I have to be seen to be believed. Indeed, she initiated the royal walkabout during her 1970 tour of Australia and New Zealand. The days of waving from a distance were over and a new royal tradition was born. Although she limited her travel to planet Earth, she was one of 70 plus world leaders to send a message to the moon in 1969. If you know your history, then you'll be aware that this was the year of the historic moon landing. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. The messages were put onto a small disc that was then given to Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin ahead of their momentous voyage. Then, in 1976, during a visit to an army base, she became the first monarch to send an email as part of a network technology demonstration. She rounded out the decade by celebrating her Silver Jubilee in 1977, marking 25 years on the throne. I want to thank all those in Britain and the Commonwealth who, through their loyalty and friendship, have given me strength and encouragement during these last 25 years. Things showed no signs of slowing down in the 80s and 90s with several key royal events. Has provided me with some of the most memorable events in my life. The hospitality of the city of London is famous around the world, but nowhere is it more appreciated than among the members of my family. There were weddings, births, marriage breakdowns, a couple of attempts on the Queen's life, and a break-in at Buckingham Palace. What do you want if it's money? I don't want money, I don't want anything. I just want to talk to you, that's all, to tell you what's going on in the country. But since we're focusing on her amazing life, we'll skip past all that and her Annus Horribilis in 1992 and jump back in with her Golden Jubilee in 2002. <laughs> This was a bittersweet time for the royal who had recently lost her sister and mother just a month apart. However, her golden jubilee marked the first monarch since Queen Victoria to celebrate a 50-year reign. It was a scene that would take anyone's breath away, and friends said later that the queen could hardly believe her eyes. Are they really all here for me, she asked. Most, it seemed, were. 
To commemorate this, the Queen traveled to 50 countries in the UK, stopping by 70 cities and towns. She also extended her celebratory tour to the Caribbean, Australia, New Zealand, and Canada. In total, she traveled over 40,000 miles. In 2004, she and Princess Anne hosted the first Women of Achievement lunch at Buckingham Palace. They invited around 180 women from a variety of disciplines, including arts, fashion, sports, politics, academia, and business. All the women here are just, you know, real woman supporters, and I wish there were more people like that. Talk about a worthy recognition of women in power. The Queen continued to make waves in the 21st century. She was the first British monarch to visit the Republic of Ireland in 100 years. She acknowledged the two countries' turbulent past and marked the beginning of better ties. Of being able to bow to the past, but not be bound by it. Of course, the moment that got everyone talking was her cameo in a James Bond sketch for the 2012 Olympics in London. But jumping out of a helicopter and celebrating her Diamond Jubilee were not even her greatest achievements that decade. By September 9, 2015, at 5.30 p.m. BST, Queen Elizabeth II had reigned for 23,226 days, 16 and a half hours. Why is this significant, you ask? Well, this meant that she had surpassed Queen Victoria as the country's longest reigning monarch. Inevitably, a long life can pass by many milestones. My own is no exception. So in 2017, she became the first to celebrate her Sapphire Jubilee as well. The Queen will be back here at Buckingham Palace within a matter of days for another year, which, despite the fact that she will be 91 in a little more than two months' time, shows very little evidence of any significant slowing down. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. In April 2021, the royal family and the Queen went through a difficult time when Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, passed away two months before his 100th birthday. But he has quite simply been my strength and stay all these years. The Queen became a symbol to guide the UK through the pandemic with Philip's scaled-down funeral, something people around the world were also going through. For me, in the months since the death of my beloved Philip, I have drawn great comfort from the warmth and affection of the many tributes to his life and work. February 6, 2022 marked exactly 70 years since the death of George VI and 70 years since Elizabeth II took the throne. This led to her Platinum Jubilee, celebrated in June of that year, the only Platinum Jubilee in UK history. Perhaps you would like a marmalade sandwich. I always keep one for emergencies. So do I. I keep mine in here. But during 2022, the Queen slowly began to retreat from public life, leaving more of her duties to the heir to the throne, Prince Charles. Just two days after appointing her 15th Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, the Queen, aged 96, passed away peacefully in Balmoral, Scotland, one of her favorite places. Her four children, plus Prince William, Prince Harry, and Sophie, Countess of Wessex, went to Balmoral to say their goodbyes. Her eldest son became King Charles III at the age of 73, with the new queen consort Camilla at his side, and preparations for the UK's first state funeral since Winston Churchill's in 1965 began. Throughout her life, Her Majesty the Queen, my beloved mother, was an inspiration, an example to me and to all my family. Queen Elizabeth II was one of the longest reigning monarchs in history and the longest in the UK by seven years. An icon of stability for people within and without the UK and the Commonwealth, and arguably the most famous woman in the world during her lifetime, she was a leader, a diplomat, a wife, a mother, a close friend of Paddington Bear, and most of all, the Queen. We should take comfort that while we may have more still to endure, Better days will return. We will be with our friends again. We will be with our families again. We will meet again. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.